I have been fascinated by astronauts all my life. The word astronaut comes from the Greek astron, meaning star, and nautis, meaning sailor. In April 1961, Vostok once circled Earth at 27,400 kilometers per hour, with a flight lasting 108 minutes. Yuri Gagarin's entry into space became a milestone for humanity. An astronaut, a star sailor, sailing in the endless sea of possibilities, a testimony of human curiosity, breaking the bonds of gravity and exploring the infinite. I am Srinivas Bhagwan, recipient of India's highest civilian honor for children, an ISA finalist and a team innovator. Today, I will be talking about the alchemy of innovation, the secret sauce of driving change in the world. I will explain the systematic process of doing research and developing the right personality for research. Our first element in this alchemy is curiosity. To be a great scientist or an innovator, you should have this most fundamental quality. Curiosity is the art of exploring, asking questions, being inquisitive. But what's really important is asking the right question and having an active desire to seek wisdom. This art has to be fostered in the young generation by the parents and teachers. When you look at the light bulb above you, you remember Thomas Alva Edison. When the telephone bell rings, you remember Alexander Graham Bell. Mary Curie was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize. When you see the blue sky, you think of Sir C. V. Raman. Famous saying by Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, former president of India by profession and an aerospace scientist at heart. Let's try to dive deeper into Sir Chandrasekhar Venkat Raman's Nobel Prize winning work. Quote, on the scattering of light and for the discovery of the effect named after him. We will try to learn more about how science works from the most extraordinary mind. A voyage to Europe in the summer of 1921 gave me the opportunity of observing the wonderful blue opalescence of the Mediterranean Sea. Quote. That's the first step, observation. But of course, this is something which people have observed before 1921 too. Still, people have failed to analyze the phenomenon due to the lack of curiosity, scientific temperament, and personality. So now, the curious mind kicks in, asking the fundamental question, why is the ocean blue? Why is the sky blue? Then comes the second step, hypothesis. Quoting from Dr. C. V. Raman's Nobel lecture, delivered in the fall of 1930. It seemed not unlikely that the phenomenon owed its origin to the scattering of sunlight by the molecules of water. The unsettling mind couldn't rest. He began putting this theory to test via a third essential step, experimentation. His lab work started immediately upon his return to India in September 1921. It became his central theme of research in Calcutta upon return. An in-depth analysis of the theory followed an unending pursuit to seek knowledge by self-discovery, a paramount quality in scientists, researchers, and innovators. Quoting again from the Nobel lecture, it soon became evident, however, that the subject possessed a significance extending far beyond the special purpose for which the work was undertaken, and that it offered unlimited scope for research. You can hear the sheer passion for his work overflowing from those words. An important takeaway here is that any research is never complete. Hence, as he mentions, this theory, the Raman effect, opened new doors for research and science. While analyzing this exemplary work, we discussed the scientific method observation, question, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, and conclusion. Mind you, this is not a linear process that ends at the conclusion. Instead, it is a cyclic one. One can have fascinating new observations by using the theory discussed in the research 
as a lens to look at the nature and life, which is the ultimate source of human inspiration. We now know that personality and attitude play a significant role in becoming a successful innovator when we return to our alchemy. Your curious nature deals with the first two steps, observation and question. But how does one go from question to hypothesis? How to think of possible explanations for physical phenomena and plausible solutions for real world problems seemingly out of nowhere? Due to my curious nature, I found myself in this situation a lot of times. I am stuck with a problem and I ask the teacher for a hint. The teacher writes a step that reduces the problem to a trivial form and I am there staring in awe. My immediate next question to the teacher is, what is the motivation behind this step? And the answer simply is experience. I found it particularly annoying initially, but slowly I realized you need to train your intuition, the sixth sense, by a lot of hard work, reading and listening to intellectual ideas. You need to teach it to think in the correct direction. The same concepts apply to being a successful innovator. Coming up with relevant hypotheses is an art. Moreover, science requires falsibility. That is a theory must be capable of being tested and shown to be true or false. Therefore, to prime your brain to start thinking in the right direction, you must take the relevant science classes and courses. If you are a high school major, go for AP courses. Strive to get into the top schools and pursue your interest in science as a professional career. Many people say you can learn a lot more yourself from books and resources than a teacher can ever teach you. Sure. But in my opinion, being in a top competitive school exposes you to the ideas in your coursework and the ones from your peers, from the extraordinary mentors, scientists and Nobel laureates. That brings us to our second element of our alchemy, interaction. Being an extrovert leading innovator is pivotal to your career. You must have connections in the scientific community. Be outgoing about your work and always be open to new ideas. To nourish all of these skills at an early age, you must practice public speaking. Build confidence in yourself. Have command over what you are speaking. Seek before you speak. You should present your ideas and work convincingly in order to attract funding, in order to attract researchers for collaboration, institutional support, or to ensure that it gets published in the top journals. What are the ways to do this? Prioritize facts and logic over emotional and philosophical ideas. Talk with statistics. Quote, 80% of world's crop is affected by this disease versus this disease is a major problem. You see how specificity and statistics makes your argument more convincing. Finally, we come to the main element, innovation itself. You have attended top schools. You now have a professional network of colleagues. You have developed a curious mind and a command of your subject. Great. The most critical point, especially as a high school researcher, is prioritizing innovation over invention. These are really similar ideas, often used interchangeably, but they have a fundamental difference. Invention means making a new product, device, or service. On the other hand, innovation improves an existing product or a process by advancing new ways or ideas. It is much easier and helps to improve upon something time to build something from scratch. As children, teenagers, and even adults, when asked to think creatively, we imagine significant changes in the world and think of making big things. Almost everyone here has dreamed of flying in our childhood by building our very own aircraft. This is normal, but we should give a mature thought and channelize our creativity and energy into innovating rather than always trying to invent. What you innovate should follow three criteria, sustainability, usability, and relevance. 
or solution to a specific issue shouldn't see the different problem. It should be sustainable and efficient in the long run. It should be easy to use, cost effective and have a minimal learning curve for faster and broader adoption. It should seek to solve relevant real world problems instead of researching abstract or complex ideas. These sure are essential, but as a teen innovator, you need traction, visibility, motivation to pursue science as a professional career. To foster these, be enthusiastic about participating in school and state level science and engineering fairs. Fairs like the International Science and Engineering Fair, ICEF, the exposure and appreciation my innovations have received there have been vital to my choosing science as a career. In addition, these platforms have given my ideas a launch pad to reach a wider audience and in the aim to benefit humankind. Summing up, we discussed three key elements, inquisitiveness, interaction and innovation in our alchemy. I wish to end by quoting a powerful idea from John Harrington. There are no dreams too large, no innovation unimaginable, and no frontiers beyond our reach. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk.